I start every morning with a run. When I start, it's a slog. I'm not what you'd call in flow. My legs strain as I run uphill, working against the steep, long roadway, panting for air and focusing on every step to not slow down. And then I reach the forest trail, and after a breezy stretch, there's another long incline. However, this one is different. This time, I run along soft, leafy paths. I can see moving tree canopies that make the temporary ceiling, the fleeting sunlight that reaches the forest floor, the naturally shaped branches and roots that fly by, and I can hear the gentle sound of rain that creates a deep sound space. My mind is pulled away and I am pulled along this incline with ease. I am deep in with my thoughts, running smoothly uphill. Now I am in flow, somewhere in my universe. Since the beginning of time, humans have been living in and evolving with nature. In fact, being surrounded by nature is in our DNA. We are wired to respond positively to the natural environments. As an architect, I design spaces that connect to that moment in nature. Here's one of my projects, McLaren Technology Center near London. The principle employed here is called biophilic design. Biophilia means the love of living systems, and it can dramatically improve the way we feel and perform in our lives. Scientists discovered genetic links that illustrate how humans have adapted their biological response mechanisms to natural environments. Several responses to natural systems are encoded in our makeup and trigger positive reactions in our physiology and psychology. That's why today, when we find ourselves in nature, we automatically feel more relaxed. Our molecules respond to biophilic design. Did you know that touching wood for 90 seconds lowers the release of stress hormones in our body? In a 2019 study, participants performed written tests in furniture settings with white surfaces and, as shown, wood surfaces. They found that taking tests in rooms constructed with a moderate balance of wooden surfaces can reduce our cortisol levels to 38%. Taking tests in rooms on wood surfaces affects our mood, motivation, stress, and even fear. Imagine maybe all work should be done on wood surfaces. Similarly, in that same furniture study, they found that heart rates drop significantly with wood. Imagine what a steady reduction of five to 10 beats per minute will do to your health. In my design for residential towers in Noida in India, we incorporated sweeping balconies and lush plantings. Beyond the presence of wood, we have observed that views of plants lower our breathing rates and our heart rates. Higher ceilings can affect and can raise our mood, and lower ceilings will depress it. In my design for a residential tower in Anyang, in South Korea, we employed similar principles. In South Korea, residential units are designed and laid out to face away from the northern border. Biophilic design affects the human body in fundamental ways. It helps regulate how your body uses carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. It can keep inflammation levels down and normalize your blood pressure. It even affects your sleep and wake cycle. Surroundings affect our physiology, our frame of mind, and our physique. As a German-American who grew up in West Germany in the 70s and 80s, I know this well. In West Germany, we had playful parks, experimental lightweight structures, such as the Munich Olympic Stadium by Frei Otto and Günther Benisch, and the Berlin Philharmonic Concert Hall by Hans Scherun, 
an organic, at the time, futuristic interpretation for the concert. However, this free-spirited culture was not accessible to our relatives who lived on the other side of the wall. As a child, and when we were able to obtain Soviet-style visas, I was shocked by the difference in feeling between the East and the West of the same country. Crossing the inner German border meant entering an opposed life construct, an oppressed culture that manifested itself in physical space and architecture. Cities were built by industry for industry. Vast new tracts of monotonous, industrially produced, all gray block housing. Since the physical space affects us so deeply, it was not surprising to see how the imposed monotony even affected the way people carried themselves physically. Research in environmental psychology consistently suggests that buildings support us best when they echo the scale and tone of the natural environment through inspiring light, form, and dimension. Philosophies and world cultures are rooted in this. The concept of biophilic design, although still new to the West, is not a new concept. 2,500 years of Eastern philosophies cherished the healing potential of nature-inspired design. For example, Buddhism embraces the concept of impermanence in philosophy and in design. Life is ever-changing, and its fleeting moments are captured in architecture. This concept of impermanence is reflected in my design for a repositioning of Intergate Manhattan, city skylines, ever-changing, always renewing. The tower sports a dynamic photovoltaic skin that picks up the changing colors of East River, Brooklyn Bridge, and Lower Manhattan a moment in time. 24th City in Chengdu in China is another good example for this. Momentary changes in natural lighting, weather, and landscaping conditions are captured in my design of Huarun Tower. The tower ground dematerializes structurally. And at the base, at the sidewalk level, the presence of the tower dissolves in a sheet of glass. Seemingly, this building becomes weightless. In Taoism, nothing is ever forced. Everything grows from within. High value is placed on equilibrium and harmony. Sometimes, growing from within is about recognizing the vernacular. I spent several years working on projects in Southeast Asia. For Lotte Center Hanoi in Vietnam, the curvilinear form of the tower is a reference to the Ao Zai, the Vietnamese long dress. In my design, we incorporated Sky Garden Atria. These light-filled multi-story atria form the central tower spine and function as community spaces for the building. This transparent central spine also then acts as a organizing element for the tower's mixed-use program. There are 14 scientifically accepted principles of biophilia. The presence of wood and views of nature are two of these. Another biophilic design principle is risk and peril. Volatility is a sensation that reminds us we are human. In my tower in Hanoi, visitors of the sky deck are drawn to the risk and the unknown when observing the city through the glass floor, some 260 meters below. It's the rawness of these moments that is worth it. We feel exhilarated, even if there's an implied threat. Our bodies release dopamine and strong pleasure response. The presence of water is one more principle of biophilia we employed at McLaren Technology Center. The facility has a seamless water sheet running across the ground plane, reflecting lighting and weather conditions. 
research on response to activities in green spaces has shown that the presence of water prompts greater improvements to both self-esteem and mood than activities conducted in green spaces without the presence of water. The science of biophilia ex explains how this works. Psychology professor Dr. Vatanian studies several complex cognitive functions such as decision-making, impulse control, empathy, emotion. He found that the sight of curvilinear shapes and spaces activates regions in the brain that determine what is beautiful. Spaces are judged as beautiful when they echo nature's curved lines. Therefore, we respond positively to organic forms, such as the flowing lines of a Vietnamese long dress or the sinuous experience at McLaren. Soft materials help. However, they're not the only solution to biophilia. Materiality is another. This is my design for a 40-story hybrid tower in Seattle. All floors, beams, and columns are made with wood so-called mass timber. Mass timber is laminated wood that is glued together or mechanically bonded for strength. In my design of Seattle Mass Timber Tower, access to natural materials is paramount. The interiors are unified by a soft, warm material palette and patterns that evoke nature. Architects create alternative worlds wish images for what could be. Take the most utilitarian project, the crumbling and now closed West Seattle Bridge, and we can instill life, fun, and well-being into it by challenging preconceived notions of what natural materials such as wood can and cannot be used for. We can build bridges, literally. Here's my concept design a replacement of West Seattle Bridge, a long span crossing made from wood. This bridge has a curved steel and carbon fiber truss below the drive deck that S curves into a steel and wood composite arch above the drive deck. In 2019, this bridge carried 100,000 vehicles per day. Now imagine the positive impact on these people when crossing this new bridge, enveloped by natural curves and wooden textures, day in and day out. Biophilic design is about the value of the embodied beauty of nature that we can bring to our everyday lives. We can create an identity, a sense of belonging and well-being. Currently, we're facing a climate and a health emergency. Environmental degradation continues, the risks associated to future and current pandemics remain, and an increasing world population encroaches on our ability to provide health and safety for all. Biophilic design is one way to promote healing for the environment, for our city full of busy people, and for our own personal selves. Everyday design choices, such as integrating interior plants, wooden surfaces, outside spaces with access to nature, the morning run through the park, trigger responses that allow us to perform better and feel more connected. When architects, developers, and city planners use biophilic principles, they help us create a society with innovative spaces, that also inspire health, beauty, and belonging. Thank you.